Last year, our permafrost started to melt in many, many places, and it's very difficult to stop this process. But we know how to do this. The Sergei Seabaugh theory is that if you put a dense array of grazing animals back on this land, they will turn tundra and boreal forest back into grassland. And grasslands can stop the release of greenhouse gases coming from this thawing permafrost. These animals, busily, almost frantically, they're eating. Chow, 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 munch, munch. These guys were working. In the winter, in order to get to the grass, the animals, they're trampling and digging down through the snow, and the cold gets into the ground and keeps the ground frozen. And then the mammoths, you can do things that cannot be done by the other herbivores, like knock down trees. Wow, holy smokes, talk about data. At Pleistocene Park, they've been able to prove that if you have fairly dense population of grazing animals on the land, that leads directly to the ground underneath, getting colder as much as two degrees Celsius. That amount of coldness can make an enormous difference in terms of heading off the thawing of the permafrost so if you get woolly mammoths back on the landscape, they will push down the temperature even more. Yo. This whole Pleistocene Park project is a form of geoengineering, an attempt to directly affect climate. And what I love about it is it's the only form of geoengineering I know that's not mechanical, it's biological. We're nudging the ecosystem in the right direction, but nature's doing most of the work. And then the animals take over and the grass takes over. And this landscape comes back to life. <laughs>